Okay, we set this up. Okay. Yeah. So, hi, everyone. Today, we'll be introducing our beloved capstone project, Recifree. But we say, rest in pieces to the competition. This presentation is created by our beloved member, Stephen. And the actual app is created and presented to you by Team Fit. Now, without further ado, let's start with our introductions. Change the slide, please. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Uh, All right. Yeah. Yeah, so my name is uh, Steven, um, but my real name is actually called Fuwei, and I was responsible for doing uh, the front end UI, and I have like a little bit of background in like design and fashion. Uh, my name is Daniel. I did the front end with Steven, and we both like bounced ideas the whole time and try to make a good front end. Um, hi, my name is Rafid. Uh, my introduction is a little longer. I'm 19 years old and I just started coding last year. I graduated uh, this fall semester, hopefully, and I'm so happy to be part of this program. I went from, you know, knowing nothing at all about how web uh, actually works. And I'm actually like now I'm like able to like develop this full, you know, full stack project with all of my friends. And, you know, it was a, like a lot of fun, honestly. Uh, Yaya, unfortunately, is not here with us today. Unf bless his heart. He really helped us like a lot throughout this uh, project. So I'll introduce him for you. Uh, he's also like a full stack uh, developer. He was able to finesse that database as as you guys uh, you guys are gonna see this actually in the actual website. Yo, big shout out, big, big shout out to him. He's amazing. He's a great person. And another uh, shout out I'd like to say is big shout out to Tenzin because I think he was here like helping us at like 9 p.m. like um, like helping us do deployment. We really appreciate it, Tenzin. Thank you very much. And you know, sorry for taking up so much of your time. All right, next slide. So here's a Figma table. Um, we actually have, uh, in reality, the actual project, like the project that you guys are gonna see, the deployed version does not actually have, uh, like, you know, the macros and such. That was like a stretch feature that we just never were able to come around to. So in reality, our Figma table has a recipe, which contains a recipe name, description, level of diff, time and steps. And uh, it also contains a uh, link and a correlation to recipe items, which has an ID, quantity, recipe ID, and ingredient. The recipe ID and recipe items is a foreign key and the ID of uh, recipe, but the recipe items also contains its own uh, foreign key, which is its own ID. Uh, now we're gonna actually go to the YouTube video and we're gonna actually like show you the actual demo right here. We didn't really have slides to like show like screenshots of the actual uh, thing, but we just, you know, we wanna, like, you know, make our presentation a little concise and quick. So yeah, you could play it. I actually don't play it yet. So. Um, oh yeah, so I'm gonna, so this is our, our, our homepage and you can see like there's a big slideshow and then to the right, you can actually see recent recipes. Uh, it's currently empty because there's nothing in our database. And so we'll get to that later. And if you look to the top, you see our nav bar. And if you could start the video, Daniel. And as you can see, uh, the slideshow actually automatically changes uh, with time. And so if we hover over our nav bar logo here, it'll actually do an animation there. And it actually links to the home page, which is the current page. And if you hover over the links that you can see, they'll actually change to a different color to indicate you're hovering over the nav bar. And, and the recent recipes, there's a loading logo. And as I said earlier, the database is empty. So it's currently loading nothing. Um, this is the install recipes page. So basically, any recipe that a user puts in, it goes to this page. And it also goes to the front page, but if there's no recipe in here, they'll have a loading screen. Or if it's actually loading, it also has a loading screen. So yeah, we could just, uh, for the creation, uh, creating recipes part, we could just like actually like leave it playing. Um, yeah, so we're actually gonna, it's gonna go to create recipes in just a bit, right there. <laughs> yeah, all right. So here's our create recipe page. We have two different forms, one for the recipe name and like the recipe table that you guys saw earlier, as well as a whole separate list for ingredients and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, we could actually start off by uh, entering the recipe name, I believe, which, great, my timing is correct. Uh, let's say it's ice cream, maybe, because, you know, it's, it's a little cold, but I'm kind of craving a little bit of uh, ice cream. Um, I guess the description can be, I don't know. So my timing's off. Creamy and savory. There we go. 
Um, yeah, so uh, the difficulty uh, level of this, I'd say it's around like a, what would you guys think? Probably a two. Um, the time would probably take, like how long would this ice cream take? Maybe like an hour. Uh, and now for the steps, well, I don't really know how to actually make ice cream. So I guess we'll just, uh, you know, a little bit of editing magic, <laughs> change it to some clothes, start up the car, head to the nearest CVS, go to the ice cream aisle and buy some ice cream. Now we actually have an option where you could choose your own image for your actual recipe and you could do any link you want as long as it's an actual image address. Like uh, for example, look at this beautiful uh, chocolate ice cream cones. We're gonna copy the image address and we could actually just drop it, paste it and let our code take care of the rest of the you know, presentation. For our ingredients, Maybe we need a little bit of ice. You can have any kind of quantity you want. So let's just say six. Um, and you know, we have multitudes of all, a bunch of ingredients, any kind of uh, ingredients that you could even possibly imagine. You could choose whatever ingredients you guys want. So yeah, so now we're gonna submit. And then we can actually add ingredient lists now. So submitting just posts the actual recipe. However, you, uh, if, in order to actually uh, allow the actual ingredient list to go like on top of that, you also have to add the ingredient list. The reason for this is a little complicated, but we'll get into that later. However, now that we're actually in the homepage, as you can see, we actually connected you know, the front end and back end pretty well. Uh, like right here, we actually see the ice cream recipe that we actually just created with the exact respective image that we added here, right over there in the recent recipes. Now we have two options. We could either go to all recipes and go from, uh, navigate to that page from here, or we could just simply go to recent recipes and just navigate straight from here. As you can see, our CSS is a little bit, uh, you know, jank here, but it's fine. You know, time crunch, you guys know how it is. Uh, the description's right on the top. Ingredients are right over there in the right. And the steps are all in the bottom. Uh, you have an image right there and it has the timer and the actual difficulty. Thank you very much, Jason. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of, yeah, so this is our, uh, recipe page and we could actually navigate using the beautiful uh, navigation bar that Daniel created and that beautiful logo that if you hover over, uh, we could go home, we could go to all recipes and here we're back right in our uh, start, the home page. Yeah. <laughs> I stuttered a lot, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, so next up is the, like our proud moments. Um, yeah, we could switch. So by the way, I'm talking a lot because I'll be uh, talking where Yaya is, you know. Uh, but so yeah, so what uh, stuff that we're really proud of, I created a user function, uh, actually a global context user function for all of our API calls and all of our uh, fetching. So, you know, like with this, we basically made it so it was so easy to like connect the front end and back end. So like, you know, I, I feel really bad for everyone else, you know, like who had like issues connecting the front end and back end, I'd say you guys should probably check out uh, reducers and use context. It will make your whole world like a whole world easier. Um, I also would like to say that we I also made dynamic roots and uh, it made it so we could like easily access the specific uh, recipe and recipe items that we wanted. Um, it just made the entire uh, process of you know like bringing our product and bring our deployment to you guys a lot simpler. I'll speak for Yaya here. Yaya did an amazing job, 10 out of 10. Dude is a genius, for, like, without a doubt. He's actually in school right now because he's in like an honors program. So he had to like do his honors class too. Amazing guy, He's he, I learned so much from him. He uh, he walked me through it, creating this database from scratch. Uh, he defined all of these beautiful endpoints. He even thought of, uh, of like an idea to create an API endpoint to bring back the most recent uh, recipe. And with that most recent recipe is actually how we added uh, the post of the recipe first, and then we added the ingredient. We used that API endpoint to receive that recipe ID, that primary key of the most recent recipe, and then assign it to the actual ingredient list. Beautiful job by him. Uh, Daniel, if you wanna talk about what yeah. you're proud of. So what I was proud of was the, uh, the actual, if you guys saw on the great recipe page, there was a, a search bar, and we used, we used the library React Select to see what that does. You're slightly cutting off, Daniel. Um, yeah, your mic is a little off. Uh, I could explain what. Yeah, I'll. I'll I could explain what your. Uh, I could explain what you like. Your you really did because I see it right here. Um, 
he actually made the logo like every single like re like the you know the beautiful logo I actually showed a lot of my friends the website and they always say like the one of their most favorite parts was the actual uh like you know like the little logo that you guys saw that was changing the colors and like changing that a little icon in the middle like the one of our like, database is empty dude he did a, an amazing job with that uh he figured out how to do that he also made the beautiful nav bar where on the top left, you also have like a GIF where if you hover over it, that links back to the homepage. It also, it's like a, like a measuring cup that like fills up, you know, amazing job by him. He added like a React select library to use async select components to search through ingredients and uh, like in the data received by the API, he added like the ingredient uh, menu. Amazing. Um, like I, I think TCP, like I, I, I don't have to like, again, shout, like shout out to TCP for giving me such a good team. I got like carried through this. <laughs> so uh, Steven, would you like to uh, explain what you did? Yeah, so I was responsible for most of well, the theme of the page and I was most, most part of actually creating the slideshow. Uh, so I thought it would actually take a lot longer, like like the other parts of the project, you know, like some project, uh, some parts took like three, four hours, but uh, doing this was maybe like one and a half hours, like, I actually learned that it, it was just me applying everything I learned and using it in a way to create this slideshow. Like I just had to like map like an array of uh, like pictures and then like I had to like do some C CSS magic to like make it move like and then see, like a timer and all that. And like, yeah, it was just like a lot simpler than like I thought it would happen. And like, yeah, yeah. And the general yeah. styling, yeah. I have to say, his uh his like style his like sense of style his sense of like you know uh like actual like design amazing i actually know steven in real life you know he's one of my friends and i have to say i could 100 percent see like his like uh fashion and creativity within our website um yeah so our next slide is done differently all right so yaya had a uh, like when he was creating the database, the one thing that he did was we like actually had to, uh, you know, like we let, we let SQLize create our specific recipe IDs and like, uh, you know, like define it by default, et cetera, et cetera. Yaya wanted to uh, make a manual primary key where we, he could edit, him, it, edit it himself. By editing it himself, it allows him to actually like we had a very big and nasty bug with ingredient lists and, and like connecting it to the actual recipes. So just do, being able to do that will allow him to like actually connect the two easier and it would like simplify a lot of the work. Um, Daniel and Steven, would you like to talk about your trials and tribulations with CSS? Oh yeah, the CSS, oh God, we spent like hours on that, me and Steven, and it took us like, we stayed up to like five sometimes, 4 a.m. And it was like really bad. Um, we wish now that we used Bootstrap, but what can we do? We had to do vanilla style. Yeah, I don't really have much yeah. much to yeah. add to this. Like we were up <laughs> like all night using pure CSS trying to style this page. <laughs> I have like talking about that project, man. Like after uh, we assigned it, the, like in the beginning, where me and yeah, we're all front end developers. Uh, Alexi probably, uh, Alex probably like mentioned earlier where he said, uh, you know, like he was talking to another group full of front enders and that was actually our group. Uh, like we had so much issues. Like, I mean, well not, we, it was a lot of issues. Uh, like we initially assigned uh, me and Yaya to the back, like back end while uh, Steven and Daniel would be into the front end. And, you know, we were working on it. We figured it, like we figured out the data, like the back end pretty well because Yaya is a genius and, uh, <laughs> and I have to, and I have to say, like you know, uh, everyone did an amazing job in the in the front. We all got like wrapped it all together, and we did our thing. Uh, next slide, please. Um, what would we have added if we had more time? Uh, you know, I would have added our search bar in the recipes. As of right now, you have to scroll through like the, if like a bunch of users start using our page, uh, we have to scroll through all of those recipes. And, you know, we don't really have a sort or a, like a function for that. I'd also want to simplify a lot of our states because a create recipe uh, component has a bunch of states. I would want to create context and reducers for all of those states if I could, but you know, I can't. Uh, and, you know, like I would love to like continue like and work on this. 
for sure. I we also had like had an original idea to like add the macros and the logic is already there. We just need to like connect it. It would be really really simple. It would probably take us one more day. Like one more day, we for sure we had the macros and calories, but we're all on time crunch. Yaya also had a similar ideas, adding a filter drop down or like a button for the recipe page. Mm. Daniel. Yeah, I agree with Rafid. Uh, right. Ryan, uh, yeah. Yeah, Brian, you got to mute. But I agree with Rafid uh, for the search bar. You have to, I wanted to make a search bar, but in the nav bar, I wanted to add it to that. And we also had an idea to like add users and like ratings, but we could not get to that because we were really on a time crunch. Yeah, like I had very similar ideas to the rest of my teammates. And um, one of the things I would want to add is like, so if you go to our, our recipe page, like uh, the cards aren't actually scrollable. So they just like kind of go off. So I would want to implement like a, a slideshow of cards that can be like user scrollable instead. Yeah. And so I'm going to pass this um, back to your feed. Yeah, so uh, the ne next slide, please. Yeah. So front end does uh daniel you want to explain the front end briefly yeah um basically we use the normal front end stuff html css javascript react we use react select for the bar to get the information from the api and we use also browse the router to make the routers throughout the pages all right and uh back end would you want to talk about that steven or actually i'll talk about it since that was <laughs> Actually, technically, yeah. my uh, what I was doing. Um, uh, yeah, so for the like a back end, we use Express, Node, SQLize, Postgres, PG Admin, and Roku for deployment. Uh, we pretty much like remembered, we thought about like everything that Ariel taught us. Bless you, Ariel, for teaching us so much throughout this month. And uh, yeah, so you know, we, we figured it all out, we had it all wrapped up together, and we did our thing. Uh, now for the last slide. So yeah, so this is our contact. Um, this is like my LinkedIn, my our GitHub, my link, like my GitHub. You know, Yaya, Daniel, Stevens, all of our information, and we're opening to questions. But before we start questions, actually, I just want to say one thing. Thank you so much, everyone, for this amazing experience. I love the uh, learning with everyone, seriously. And once again, like shout out to my team. Uh, like we all really, really pulled it through. Like me, like they we decided and we allocated certain tasks for each other and we were able to like 100 percent finish that and to the point where like when i had to like you know connect the back end to the front end or like make api calls and such like that we always had that skeleton that i could just quickly like look at change up some words and just fix it up so shout out to my team shout out to the matchmaking in here 10 out of 10. Make sure to check out the My Career tab on the BC Navigator app, where you can track your career progress based on the amount of credits you've earned, stay updated on upcoming events from the Magner Center, and watch our videos for insight and advice on your career field.